Hello everyone, welcome to Joystick Lab. In this tutorial, we are going to create a web AR experience using Needle Engine. This tool is pretty sick. What you have to do is do all your stuff in Unity and then you can bring them to web without much hurdle. You can add your own lights in Unity and they will be transported to web without any effort. You can even create your own shader in Unity and then bring them into web without much effort. Needle has SDK for Unity, integration for Blender, and it also comes with its own 3JS extension. So even if you don't want to use Unity, you can use Needle Engine to create your web AR experiences using their 3JS extension pack. So let's get started. If you want to see more content like this, hit the notification bell and subscribe to our channel to support us. Let's start by downloading the asset for Unity. We can go to get started and quick start. From there, if you scroll down, you can download the Needle Engine package for Unity. Now, you need to make sure that you have Node.js installed in your computer. I'm not going to cover how to install Node.js. You can search it online. You'll find a lot of tutorial out there. Now the download is completed. We can create a new project. We need to make sure that the version is 2022.3, the LTS version of Unity. We're going to give it a name and create a new project. You can simply drag and drop the package in your asset folder to install it in your Unity project. Right, so the installation is now completed. Let's browse a little bit and see how this Needle Engine works. So, we have a few new options. In our tab bar, we have a Needle Engine tab. And in here, you can see there is a option to explore the samples. From there, you'll see there is a bunch of samples that you can download or you can even try it out on the browser. We're not going to import any of the samples right now. We are going to create a new scene and if you go to file new scene, there is a two new option. First minimal needle engine and there is a sandbox. Let's start with the sandbox and try to dissect some of the component that needle engine have. So in a needle engine scene, you have a option for exporting that scene as a web project, right? So we have to have that in our scene and rest of the items are just typical game objects. We add them based on our need. In here, they have something like networking, some XR component, some animation, and some camera component and things like that, right? And these are all those assets they have in the project. Now, in the export game object, you are going to see there is a panel for, you know, like selecting the project folder, exporting, compressing, and things like that. What it does is basically when you click on this install, it is going to create a new project and it's going to install necessary 3JS component, NPM and things like that. So this is just going to get your needle engine ready for web AR export or web export. When that's done, we can simply click on play and now it's going to start exporting the scene and it's automatically going to start the project in a browser. By default, you're going to see that the connection is not private. So don't worry about that. Click on advanced and go to the link. And in here, you can see we have this 3D scene that is rendered in the browser and we have it in our IP address. If we go back to Unity, the fun part is that if I play the game from here, the server is running in that IP address. And if I move something from here, I'm just going to keep them side by side so you can see both of this. So let's see, I'm just going to move this and then I'm going to save my scene. And the update is automatically happened, right? So it detects a change and hot reloads the scene. And you can see that the object has been moved.
Now anything that you can create here is going to be reflected in the scene. So we don't have to write any, you know, 3JS code for this. The project is automatically created for us. We can go to that project by simply again going to the export tab. And then there we can go to the workspace. I have Visual Studio code installed in my system. So it basically opens up the TypeScript and the, you know, the node, the, the Needle Engine project in there. And these are basically some script written in TypeScript. And um, like I said earlier, Needle Engine can be used as a standalone tool itself. You don't have to add it with Unity or something like that. But with Unity, if you add them, the benefit is that we have an editor. Like we can we can create those contents in here and we can easily export them without much hassle. We can even add some animations as well, right? So they have the exporter for animations as well. So whenever we add some animation in any of these game object, that is also going to be reflected there. Another really interesting feature of Needle Engine is the multiplayer feature. All the scenes are automatically networked already. So if I move the scenes and basically add a new object in the left scene, you can see that in the right scene, that object is already created. If I move it up, you can see that both of the scenes are getting reflected. If I try to demolish that, it's gone in both of the scenes. If you move the camera, you can see even that the player from the other camera is visible in this scene as well. So the scenes are automatically networked, so it's really easy to create multiplayer projects in Needle. Needle has a really good integration with XR. So in here, in the example scene, if you click on the XR game object, there is a component web XR. And we are going to talk a little bit about the AR part of this component. In here, you can see there is an option for use placement adjustment. Make sure that is checked on. This is going to enable you to make sure that the object can be, you know, uh, in the object is interactive. So that means you can scale it, move it or rotate that. Then we have a scale factor, which is 10. This is better. So, you know, like the object is a little bit bigger when you are using it in your phone. Then we have XR anchor, which is just going to create an anchor on your scene. And that anchor is going to be refreshed in every few frames. However, this is still on beta, so we're not going to use that. The next one is really important. Quick look export. What happens is that in iOS, Web XR is not supported. So what Needle did is that they have their own USDZ exporter. And USDZ is a file that is supported in iOS. So when they basically export the scene, they also add a USDZ exporter in your project if that is not there already and that will enable you to experience this AR in your iOS devices as well. So we are going to tick that. The last one is use depth sensing. We are not going to use it. This is only used for Quest devices. All right, so save this. And like I said before, when you save it, it's already exporting the scene automatically. So we can go back to our project. Okay, so let's try to open this in our mobile. I'm going to enter on AR. Just trying to get a ground. So if I tap, now you can see, I can move it because we added that interactable. And then you can rotate and scale this as well. Now let's bring this really amazing burger from McDonald's into our table using AR. We're going to use Quick Look this time in our iPhone. And using Needle, we're going to add this 3D food menu in our table. I have opened the app. If I click on Quick Look, this is how it's going to look like when the app is done, by the way. And you can see the app detects the plane and we can move our burger and this is pretty detailed. I'll also show you how I created this model. Let's get started. First thing first, how did I create this 3D model? Well, I used Polymuse. It's a 3D scanning app that can help you create 3D model in minutes using your iOS or Android device. 
You can get a lifetime deal on this product by visiting polymuse.tech. If you want to get additional discount on top of this lifetime deal, use the coupon joystick lab and you're going to get 10% discount on this lifetime deal. Now creating the app is as easy as it was to create that 3D model. Let's start by going to file and new scene and create an empty needle scene in your project. When the scene is loaded, you'll see there is an export game object. This is the game object that is going to export the project to web. And we have a few other components for camera, look at, direction light, grid and XR. So we are basically going to use this XR game object to add some functionality for iOS. So let's add USDZ exporter. Now, even if you don't do this, it's automatically going to add the current scene as an object to export. And this USDZ exporter is automatically going to be created, but I'm going to create it anyway, just to be safe. And then I'm going to drag and drop the grid game object into the object to export. Save this. Now we are going to need that burger model that I showed you earlier. To do that, we can go to polymuse.tech and scroll down. You'll see there is a option to browse more. Click on that. And that will take you to the Sketchfab page from there you can download this 3d model you can click on this button to download it automatically or you can basically click on the view first and then you know download it so i am going to download it as the glb format i have already done it so yeah when you are done downloading the asset import it to unity this is how the model looks. We're simply going to drag and drop this 3D model inside our grid game object. Now the model is pretty big, the scale is 13, so I'm going to scale it down. I'm going to change it back to 1. So one new thing in Unity is that you can click on this small icon here to keep the proportion. So I'm going to click on that and if I click on 1, it's going to be scaled in both X, Y, and Z direction, right? So all the directions are automatically scaled. Now save this and we can click on the export game object. Install, wait for a little bit. When the installation is done, you can click on play. It's going to start the export. And when the export is done, it's going to open the scene for us in browser. If it doesn't happen, we can click on open server that is going to open that scene, right? So we did a mistake. This object is not centered. So it's gonna be a problem when we start our experience. So let's go back to Unity and change the position of the object to 0, 0, 0, right? So I'm just going to change this position to 0, 0, 0. I'll save this one more time and we are ready to see our AR experience in our iPhone. First, let's see how it looks in our Android device. So we can scale it. We can move or rotate the view of the camera. And then if we click on enter AR, that is going to start a AR experience. Let's detect the ground. Now in Android, if I try to move this burger, you can see we cannot move this. So let me know in the comment what is the problem here and how can we solve it. Now let's jump back to iOS. All right, so this is how it looks in iOS. And remember, both of these experiences are basically running from a browser. We are not using any third-party app. It's just Google Chrome, right? And we can click on open in Quick Look. Quick Look is an integration, native integration for iOS AR experiences, right? 
and it can do other stuff as well but we are interested to AR in here we can move rotate or scale this burger awesome so that's all about for today if you want to see more contents like this make sure you subscribe to the channel and let me know in the comment what sort of videos you want me to cover i'll see you in the next tutorial